Değerli espor izleyenleri 3 saniyeye hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Her hafta olduğu gibi basketbola dair en özel isimler ve en güncel konularla bu hafta da sizlerleyiz. Bu haftaki konuğum ASB Ligi'nde Fuenlabrada'da forma giyen Amerikalı guard Sean Armand. Welcome Sean. Shall I say merhaba? <gülüyor> merhaba. Me I did the same thing with Jamar Smith. I'm like, shall I go like merhaba? So I have to do the same thing with you because of your, you know, Turkey journey that you had, which we will talk about. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I can't complain. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. And you know, like to all my audience, I have to say that me and Sean, we're really good friends. So I've been always telling him and when I saw him in New York, I'm like, we have to do a one episode together. So I'm super happy For sure. that, that you're my guest. How, how is it going Finally. in Spain? Um, all is good. We three games in. We won in two right now. We won our last one. So um, yeah. all things looking up. Hopefully we get a streak going. Yeah, and actually we have to talk about your latest game, uh, which you played against Andorra, and then you were the MVP. Yes. Like you scored yes, amazing yes. triple points. So we're we're gonna talk about them. But first okay. of all, to everyone who is watching us right now, I'm curious, and everyone is curious. How did you start your basketball career? Why basketball? Uh, so, quick story. I was five foot five going into high school. And uh, trying to convince my mom I want to play basketball. And, uh, you know, she didn't really want me to play. My coach saw me. He didn't want me to play. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> okay. the team was bad. So I got on the team. And um, that next year I grew to six feet. And after that, I just took off, really. Oh, my that's... neighborhood, it was just a basketball court there. And that was the best thing to do to stay out of trouble. Yeah, but there's also the college years, which you played amazingly. And when I was in the NBA Finals, Some journalists and some NBA people were talking about you when I said that, you know, Sean is my friend from New York City. And they're like, when he played college league, like Iona College, like he was, he was the beast. He was playing amazing. So how, how do you see your performance when you look back and when you think about those years? Oh, uh, so in college, I was just known as a shooter. So, you know, um, ranked nationally, I was one of the best shooters. I was a lot of hype coming out. So turning pro, I had to expand my game, to be honest. So I had to do a lot more transition to playing point guard, um, passing more, shooting more. So I, I'm really versatile at this point, not just, you know, um, a catch and shoot guy like at college. So I think it helped me uh, expand as a player and as a person. But wait, because after that, 2014, you were undrafted. So when you look yes. back the college years, would you be like, okay, I need to change this on my basketball playing style or I needed to do that like do, do you have any specific things that you would like to change back in those times no so I went to Iona as a mid-major so you know it wasn't like we was playing uh Kentucky and Duke every night I was on TV every night we had a good schedule and everything I did my part to help my team and be successful so there's no regrets there mm -hmm. but um I think Personally, I could have been a better ball handler at the time, um, expand my game a little bit more. But in the later years, that's what I've done. But what's happened, happened. I'm happy with how it went. And and why why did you choose overseas for the first years after the college? Like why you chose, for example, Frankfurt? Yeah, so Frankfurt uh, has a reputation of having a lot of guards, um, uh, rookie guards coming in. Justin Cobbs and I was together. Um, we had a great season, but compared to the G League offers I had uh, with Orlando Magic, I kind of didn't want to go that route. I was uh, very unsure. The G League wasn't it was what it was now. So um, then I went overseas and then the career went from there, went from uh, Germany to one of the best leagues, Turkey. So I have no regrets for this. Yeah, when you mentioned about G League, I want to I wanna, like, hear your opinion about G League in these days, like D League, G League, however you want to call it. But, um, for example, Jalen Green, now Houston yeah. Rockets' new um, draft, new rookie, um, he played for G League. He chose to play in G mm -hmm. League. Um, so, in these days, you think G League is one of the most important le leagues after NBA in the world? Um, I personally still think it's Euro League. Uh, second, but I can see why for a guy like Jalen Green or any uh, guy coming out of high school with so much talent and so much, um, you know, potential to go to G League route because, you know, you, you, you're not going to finish school at the at the moment. You can always go back, but, right. you know, you're going to, you know, work on your game, get paid and, and go to the next level. So why go to chemistry class from nine to five and then go to practice? I mean, you could just 
go to practice twice and go on with your day and help your family out, honestly. Yeah, but in that case, you choose money over the, you know, like career path. So it's like it's such a, I think it's a, it's a small detail in someone's as a basketball player's life, right? To choose or yeah. G League or, I mean, yeah. But if you're Jalen Green or uh, anybody in that situation, you, you're not a you're not the ordinary uh, player. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, you're gonna ex expedite your youth. Right. You, you're not now you're a grown up. But you know it's it's pros and cons with everything. So guys like that, you got to take the risk and hope for the best. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree with you. I mean, when 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 I do brainstorming with my friends, like with basketball players, it's just like I, you know, some females think differently, but guys, it's money, career, family, everything. Like you know, yeah. I, I want to do sometimes empathy. And um, so in Frankfurt, what did you experience first? And you were like, okay, this is new to me and to my life in Germany. <laughs> A funny story. My first practice, uh, I didn't know nothing about gas water. Uh, until I got to Europe. Okay. So I remember I'm practicing hard. I'm tired. I'm like, man, this is different. I go over to the sideline. I take a water. I chug the water. I spit everything out. Everyone's looking at me crazy. <laughs> and it was the red cap, the highest gas you could have. But I'm just like, man, I got to adapt to little things. Uh, my phone being off. I didn't have any phone service my first week. Not be able to communicate with my family because when I left, I didn't have Wi-Fi. Um... The language barrier, of course. Of course. But, but I, had a, Germany, I had a group of guys. Yeah. But in Germany, I mean, you, you didn't have that kind of struggle that which you had probably. Oof, no. <laughs> okay. You know, you know what I mean. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. Turkey. Yeah. In Turkey, yeah. it was much different. Yeah. It's, it's much uh, but, different. Yeah. And, but um, so after Frankfurt, you came to play in Istanbul. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, yes. In, in Istanbul first, and then after you went to Gaziantep. Yeah, two years in Istanbul, one year in Antep, and then uh, Zenit and then back to Başakşehir. Exactly. But, okay, before talking about Istanbul Büyükşehir Belediyesi, yeah. as we've, we've started to talk about experiences, what, what was your experience that you would never forget in Gaziantep? In Gaziantep... Uh, top of the head, I don't know. It's you know when you go there, uh, you know you think it's when you're a visiting team, you think it's a it's a it's a city that you don't want to be in. You know it's close to Syria, blah blah blah. But it's one of the best cities I, I, I've been in uh, as far as organizations. The fans are passionate. The food is amazing. The food. Um, the food <laughs> yeah, is so. my favorite. Yes, exactly. I agree on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, yeah, I had no complaints there. We played Champions League and um, the organization as a whole was, was good. And um, last season when I had a guest from Gaziantep, um, mm. John, his name is John. He used to play in Gaziantep, but this season he plays for another um, team. He said, you know, Denise, when the American guys come and play for our team, First, I don't want them because when they taste the, the meat, the food, which is spicy, they get a little right. bit uncomfortable. But after they really like it, that's what he said. So when you first taste it, was it, was it different for you? Nah, so then that was my third year in Turkey already. So I kind of adapted already. So I was looking forward to a different. I heard good things about the food and, uh, you know, the baklava and everything. So I was, I was all in already. I already adapted. So I was happy about it. Yeah, exactly. Well, but enough with the food. Let's let's start <laughs> talk about basketball in this case. But Istanbul <laughs> Büyükşehir Belediyesi. How how was that journey for you? First time in Turkey. You know, as a as a club, it's it's different and different than the others. It was I think I think back in that time they were rebuilding the club, right? Right, right. From from my knowledge, so that was just my second year professional. Mm -hmm. So you know, I was just happy to hear that you know Spain and Turkey was the top two leagues outside of EuroLeague. So I was just excited to make that jump. And then, um, like I said, I had Marcus Denman and Justin Cobbs came along with me to this team. So it was quick to adapt. It was hard to adapt at first, you know, so many much better players, bigger players, a different game style. So, um, you know, it helped me a lot in my career. And it's my second year there, I really took off, I felt like. But in Turkey, when you were playing for, for example, when you were playing for Istanbul Büyükşehir Belediyesi or Gaziantep, do you have any specific game that you were like, okay, this game is, this game was my game and, and I played amazingly and, you know, I was guarding amazingly, I was shooting amazingly. Like, do you have any kind of game like that that you um, played in Turkey? 
I, I would think like the Gaziantep fans really, uh, we have a connection because we was on the border of being uh, regulated. And it was probably like seven, eight games left. And I think I averaged 25 a game from those last eight games. And um, I remember we playing Dosh Africa when David Blatt was the coach. It was the last game of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the teams that got regulated was playing at the same time as us. So we in the middle of the game. Uh, they lose and they like, yo, Sean, we got to win. They lost. If we win, we stay like like this. <laughs> and it's me and Patrick Miller. Uh-huh. He driving kick deep three. I make it. Everyone goes crazy. That's at the game. And then we stay in the, in the, uh, in the top league. So, you know, I think those last eight games were like something different. I don't know if Antep seen from a player and I was in a different mode. And um, that's something I remember a lot. Yeah, that's 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 for sure that you would remember. But like as you said, mentioned also the other basketball American basketball players' names. I I, I wanted to ask you, and also that it's on my notes. I want to ask you this question because nowadays so many American athletes they talk about this topic that being an overseas athlete. What are the mm-hmm. difficulties? And I, I want to also ask you the advantages, but the But first, I want to ask you, what are the mainly like main difficulties that you guys have when you play overseas and when you live overseas? Um, it's tough because, you know, the, the, the clear cut answer is, you know, you're away from your family so long, your friends, you adapt to the time difference, this, that, and the third. And then you go deeper with the COVID season and then COVID in general it affected everyone. But some countries didn't allow family or friends to travel. Um, you was complete lockdown. So it's kind of like you in solitary because, you know, it was practice, gym, grocery store, rinse and repeat. So, you know, if you're not mentally tough, and again, I say it's for everything, you're not going to be able to succeed. So you need a, a strong core. You need friends and family that's there for you to understand. And you got to adapt to the country. So, you know, you got to enjoy the culture, enjoy the the differences, enjoy the weather, the food, adapt it and don't complain about it, I think. Yeah, but me- for example, when you had, because you had an injury and you had to keep mm-hmm. like that Zenit period, for example, like you had right. to be very tough, you know, you have to be strong, you have to be tough. So how did you train your, your, your brain actually? How, how, how was the training times for you mentally? Um, I think right now, um, that was like one of the hardest points of my career because I felt like I was in a spot to go, you know, from Euro Cup to Euro League. I was playing alongside Brandon Jennings, Jalen Reynolds, um, one of the best centers in Europe right now. So when I got injured, first game versus Turk Telecom. <laughs> um, yeah, ironically. You know, it, it, yeah, right. It took me back because it's like, no, now everything changes between taking care of my body. I changed my diet, became pescatarian while I was out for four months. Um, then you, you start thinking financially, like, you know, uh, let me start saving money. I don't know how I'm going to be a player after this and what's going to come next. Then you start thinking mentally, like, you know, am I going to heal correctly? Are, are teams going to want me? So you, it's so many emotions at once and you just got to, you know, lock in and go day by day, uh, take it one day at a time. And again, family, friends, and your mental, that's what's going to get you through it. Yeah, right. I, I agree with you. And it's really hard. You know, it's, it's, it's also another job. We actually, you and me, we talked about that during the summertime. It's, it's, another, right. it's an, another effort that you have to put on, you know, like uh, effort as like to the, to the different things. And men- mentally, it's right. so hard. And um, I actually, when I announced you that you would be my guest, um, I had this question that I want to ask you. Um, from, <laughs> okay. a, from a Russian fan that since we're talking about Zenit, um, he asked... He said, what actually happened in Zenit and how does he see that period? Um, so for me, like I said, we was uh we had a we was stacked. We had a great squad. Um, if not for injuries, I think we could have made a real good run. Mm-hmm. Though we lost in the semifinals to Cheska. But for myself, first game of the season, my fourth day in Russia, I get hurt. My shooting arm. So, you know, first from four there, days, that's that's really interesting. Like Right. So I didn't know the town. I didn't know the city. I get hurt. I'm out four to five months. Um, a coaching change. Brandon Jennings leaves. New players. So I got thrown back into the fire. My first two games, we beat Cheska. We beat Kempke. I start at point guard. I'm thinking everything's good. And then, um, you know, I, I kind of get benched to an extent with, with no explanation, no nothing. But that's when you, you know, I already did the mental challenge of coming back healthy, being prepared. And now I got to uh, embrace to the next thing of having a new role in the team that I was used to. But um, all things considered, you know, I just did my job as a professional. I only can control what I can control. So um, I came back, did my part, and was did what I needed. You know, other than that, I, I had no control. And a lot of the fans were Definitely. confused about what happened, but it is what it is. Yeah, and Zenit as a club, they have 
a great I mean fan club I mean a fan base yeah. as the, they really love basketball and they put a lot of love into basketball so it's just very interesting and it's not it's not an only message that I got from a Russian fan but they they have a love they have still love for you so you have to know about I, that you know throughout I do want to say the uh, <laughs> the Russian fans were were phenomenal really like where I was hurt every every couple of days I got messages encouraging messages so I'm at the games a lot of support and one special fan she made me pictures brownies uh posters everything she was she was she was amazing and i love her to this day we still keep keeping in contact wow and 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 in turkey do you have any memory about with a fan that you can you know possibly tell us it's like a fun fun memory a fun memory um i guess uh i guess gaziantep fans were phenomenal really like <laughs> I, I guess because nothing else was going on in town. They was all at the game. So we went to the parking lot. Uh, I think I had a solid game. And then the fans just rushed my car. So they all talking. And my English, they're Turkish. We're miscommunicating. So okay. I'm like, let's take a, a video. I went Instagram live. And they all got shy and ran away. So I was just like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing. Like, They're am yeah, I'm not telling yeah. you because I'm Turkish, but Turkish fans are, are, are another, another no. level. Especially like... Really? Like yeah, yeah, I mean, no? No, peak, peak fandom, like my first year in Turkey, uh, Galatasaray was in Euro Cup, I believe. I took yeah. my mom to the game. <laughs> and it was my first time at a, at a game. And it was peak Ga uh, uh, Galatasaray fans, like flames in the crowds, yelling, everything. And I was like, yo, I want to play here so bad. I want that experience so bad. Right. And, so, and, and But now you're in Spain. It's kind of similar, no? That you play in yeah, Spain. Yeah, so... So the fans here, I've been told they're, you know, they're very passionate. Um, you know, now they're at 80% capacity for COVID. So our next home game, hoping to see more fans. And, um, yeah, they're active on social media. Like, you have a bad game, they tell you about it. You have a good game, they praise you. So that's kind of new for me. So I'm uh, interested to see what happens in Spain. Exactly. I'm, I'm very curious because you played an amazing game against Andorra. So let's go back. I, I want to start with that. What was going <laughs> okay. through your mind when you were shooting those threes? Yeah, so like I said, uh, at the end of the day, my first job is to be a shooter, a scorer, and that's what I'm used to. So um, before the game, was a lot of fans questioning me about my first two uh, games. But it's a lot of adapting the ACV league um, into the team. So right. the third game, I just like, yo, you know, I did the overthinking. I did the being passive. So now I'm just going to play my game. And, and good things happen. I was aggressive offensively and um, being the vocal leader. And, and that, that was that normal, normal day. But, but, but also, I want to ask you that. What is, the, like, what is the chemistry going on in that team? Because when I watched that, I, I was very curious about your game. So I rewatched the game. I played, I right. replayed the game okay. Okay, and I Beaver. saw this, I, of course, I saw this amazing chemistry between you guys, like on the court in Fuenlabrada team. Like what, what, what is, what is the main secret about that chemistry with the players? So I think um, that's a good observation to be honest, because most of the guys are all there from last year. So they know each other well, um, myself and another big man and we're new. So, you know, it's just kind of like they accepted us. So it's easy to get along and we all common backgrounds and, you know, we all hoop, obviously. So it was just, you know, it's coming together as a team, quickly adapting and respecting each other. And it, it led from practice to the game, honestly. Yeah. And, and how is this uh, ACB league? Like, how do you see that league? Because you played in Israel, you played in um, uh, LMB Pro, and then you played in Turkey, you played in Germany. So now you're playing right. in ACB league. Like, how was that league? So I, I will say this, I, I'm very biased being in Turkey for years. I always said Turkey is the best league. Uh, I would say Spain was second, whatever, right? Now after playing in Spain, and I've heard everyone say it's the best domestic league. And I have to agree because the, the domestic players are so good. Like really? I think they're for sure, they're for sure the best domestic league uh, players. And then you put on like, their attention to detail is, is top tier. So, you know, if you make a mistake, you're going to pay for it 90% of the time. For Every sure. night out, you got to defend. Every night out, you got to know who you got. So I, I think the, that was what I was adapting to uh, more so than anything. And then the style of play is a little bit different. Right. So, um, yeah, I think, I think ACB, the hype that I heard is very, is very true. It's, it's, one, it's the best league, domestic league, and Turkey's second for sure.
Okay, you you don't have to say it like that. I got you, but um. No, but but I, as a, no, no, you know I agree with you. As domestic players, I put Spain first, Greece, Greece yeah. second, and Italy third. That's that's my um as uh, like domestic players in a domestic league. If, if I had to go domestic players ranking top three, I never played in Italy, so mm -hmm. I, I can't say for this. But um, I would go Spain, then I would go uh, VTB for sure. VTB. Oh, I for, I forgot yeah. that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I yeah. They're, they're stacked you. over there. I agree with you. That's that's an also yeah. an elite league. And um, so if I yeah. ask you some your some of your favorite domestic Spanish players, who would you, who mm -hmm. whose name would you say? Oof, maybe too soon. On and on and three games for me. That's all I need. It's it's, but, it's good uh, but, because when they're going to be like you know good players or when we see them as like in the highlights, I need them. Okay. Well, obviously, you know, you do the EuroLeague, so, you know, Sergio Lou, you know, I can't, I mean, that's automatic. Right. Um, that's Spanish players so far. Ah, you got me, Denise. I don't, I can't, I don't know right now. But in your team, in your team, like how many American players you are, you guys are? So technically three, but one has a passport. So, you okay. know, it's, it's right. two. Then we it's, got a Brazilian guy, Serbian guys. It, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah, also it's a that, mix. It's a big mix. The reason why I asked you that question because in Spain, Acebe League does I mean, they don't have many Spanish players like the other leagues right. have. You know, that's right, that's right. also one of the most important thing for the domestic players to grow more day by day. And and you you said something right. which is correct that no none of my um guests has been mentioned that, you know, Acebe is one of the best domestic leagues in um, in the world, I For agree sure. with that. And um, so, do you do, did you follow the NBA Finals? Do you follow NBA? Of course, of course. And and, and my homie was the uh, the best reporter out there. So I was following. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> but you know, I asked this question because you're from New York. You're from Brooklyn, yeah. right? For our audience. Of then. course, of course. What of course. what went wrong during the playoffs against Bucks about Brooklyn? For the Nets. Um, I, I mean, it's clear cut. It was injury. If James Harden is, is healthy, it's a whole different uh, uh, series. And then Kyrie wasn't even playing. So you take away two of the best players in the NBA right. from a, a, a semifinals game. Of course, you're going to change. And it's a lot of more pressure on KD. Mm -hmm. And in uh, and, and, and my opinion, maybe biased because he's an overseas guy, Mike James should have played some more. And then, really? <laughs> you know, he's another exactly. boy. He's from another Tresca boy to handler. Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he's another uh, ball handler. He's crafty, and you, know, you know, I think he, he's more than capable. But um, it was injuries, to be honest. It was injuries, and I think if not injured, they in the final. Yeah, and 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 I heard something about you have been played in Kyrie's league, right? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I yeah. mistaken? Um, so can we hear about that <laughs> league? Like, how is Kyrie Irving? Like, how is how 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 is it? Um, all right, so it wasn't a league. It's just like some open runs in the summer just to stay in shape. The guys come together, a few NBA guys, a few overseas guys. But if you listen to the internet, Kyrie is nothing like that. Phenomenal guy, very um, very friendly. Mm -hmm. He's giving back feedback. He's he's bringing us together for prayer before and after um, the, the, the runs. And, like, you know, I think somebody at his level and the, the respect he shows everyone, the love he shows everyone, I was shocked, and that's why you got You can never believe what you hear about someone. You got to see for yourself. Sometimes media is, you know, is um, not all the media, yeah. but sometimes it is like that. <laughs> it is what it is, and um, so, it's a gift and a curse. Exactly. So, right. before having your message to the Turkish fans, I'm, I want to yeah. ask you, lastly, something mm -hmm. at, about basketball, about you choosing your top five. First, I need your top okay. five of NBA since it's going to be starting soon, the season, the new season. So I need your top five NBA players. Oh, top five NBA players. For, the next, for this season, not like, you know, former NBA players. Right now, current ones. Who's the best five NBA players? So I'm going KD1. Okay. I'm, I'm still going Braun2. Okay. Greek, Greek being three. Unpopular, Kawhi Leonard four. Okay. And then five is the chef, Chef Mr. Curry. Really? 
And hard in six, in case you wanted it. <laughs> you can, you can, but also seven if you want. If you want, there. I mean, if you want, you can put the seventh one. It's okay. No, no, no. That's it. I, I stopped there. Just I stopped there. Okay. No rookies, though. No rookies. Which, what, what rookie that makes you excited to watch this season? All right. Be honest. Oh, for sure. Nah, I'm gonna be honest, and it's gonna seem like because you, you worked with them in the interview, it's not true. Okay. But Rockets rookies, the trio they have is, is phenomenal. They Between are. Between Jalen, Gup, they and, and, the, are and the big fella from Besitage. Alfred and Schengen, yes, exactly. Tough. Houston They're Rockets, tough. I, I'm so curious to watch. Like, I'm super excited to watch them. And then lastly, your overseas top five yeah. American players. Overseas top five American players. Best players that I think. Yeah, current ones. And I don't, na can't name myself. Of course you cannot. No, you cannot add okay. yourself. Just, just, make, just making sure. All right, so okay. we're going to start the list. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go Mike James being okay. one. Um, oh, Kevin Punter, my, my close friend, too, for me. Um, I got to throw some bigs in there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Your top five. Uh, Your top five. Yeah, my top five. So Mike James, Kevin, Kevin Punter. Punter. Damn. We got Kylie. Oh. Kylie. <laughs> okay, okay. Go ahead. De Decolo. Okay. Well, yeah, he's French. No, he's French. I said Americans. Oh, only Americans. Only okay, Americans. Okay, okay, okay. My bad. I thought you were saying top five in No, general. no, no. So Mike... Overseas American athletes who play in Europe. Okay. Okay. Mike, Mike KP. James. KP. And it's I'm so easy. Oh, my God. It's really easy. I mean, I cannot say, not... obviously, but. Oh, Shane. 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 Shane Larkin. Okay. Bad. Shane Larkin. Uh, Shane. Shane three. Four and five. I got to throw some big men in there. Um. You want me to say Cal Hines, but I'm not going to. No, he's great. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, great. Oh, wow. I just got my topic. I, I just got my line for the teaser. Amazing. Okay, oh thank you. Oh, my God. Don't do this. Big Go respect ahead. to Mr. Hines, bro. Go don't ahead. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Um, oh, man, why am I struggling for four and five? I don't know. But it's hard. It's a hard question. It's, you, you, yeah. Yeah you, didn't, yeah, you didn't even let me prep for this question. So you um, chose three. We have two missing. Yeah, Get, throw some teams out there that, that you think I'm going to name you some teams. Olympia Milano, Panathinaikos, mm -hmm. Unix Kazan, Monaco, um, Partizan, is, it, Partizan is also in Europe. Yeah, we're not, we don't need to talk yeah, about yeah. only EuroLeague. Galatasaray, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. For, for me, personally, I'm going, I'm going guards here. Might be biased. So, Mike James, KP, Shane Larkin. I'm a big Eric McCollum fan. Me too. Same. Um, so McCollum and and a, and a fifth for me. Um, you just had him on the show, Jamar Smith. I think he's so underrated, and he, he's one of the best guards in Europe. I agree with you. I was about to like you know make you remember that name, and I I thought you would say Jalen Reynolds. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You kind of you threw me off. Okay, that's what? what that's my job. That's my job. That's what I have to do. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do want to say I think I think Jalen Reynolds is one of the best centers in, in Europe right now. So that's for yeah. sure. Go without yeah. saying. No, I agree with that. And 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 again to Cal Hines, big respect to bro. He's a, he's a legend. Okay, <laughs> so. it's not gonna it's not gonna help you, but okay, we we got this part too. We got this part too. And um, so, Sean, when I announced you, you know, I received many love messages from the fans mostly from Turkish fans. So I need your right. message to them. Um, you know, truly, um, when I when I did leave Turkey, uh, when I went when I went to Russia, I was kind of sad about it. My second, third and fourth year professional was there. Um, the way I embraced the culture, the way they embraced me. I love Turkey to this day. Um, hopefully I play there again before my career is over. But I'm grateful and thankful for all the love I still get, all the love I got when I was on these teams, and even some teams I didn't play against, just the lovely messages. And um, as a league and the organizations I work for, they're so welcoming. It's like a family. So, you know, right. much love to everyone in Turkey. Right. And do you have any team on your mind that you would be like, oh, I can play there one day? Or two teams? Uh, for me, 
Well, in general, I want to play EuroLeague before it's all said and done. I, or Euro Cup since I got injured. But um, I always wanted to play for Galatasaray because I just want to play in that for, uh, sold out arena and mm-hmm. just see all the love from the fans and, um, you know, Fenerbahce, Fenerbahce. So, okay, we're going to cut the same, this part. The same thing. We're gonna, I'm going to cut this part and I'm going to send this part to the media manager of Galatasaray. Maybe <laughs> one day they'll meet that. <laughs> Sean, thank Rishi, you so Rishi much Rishi for being on our show. Really, it was so much fun for Thanks me. Thanks for having me. And, and I'm sure everybody is so glad to see you and hear your own perspective and your mentality about basketball. So thank you for being with us. Thank you too, Bieber. Thank you too. Thank and I you. heard this is uh, sponsored by uh, Casamigos. Casamigos, yes. We, shout out to Casamigos. <laughs> we had to mention that. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much. And hope to see you soon, maybe in Spain. Yes. Who knows? Yeah, when you for the Euroleague games, let me know. Exactly. I will. Thank you, Sean. And take care. All right, Denise. Bye. All right. Değerli Sportiz değerleri haftaya tekrardan yeni bir 3 saniyede görüşmek dileğiyle. Hoşçakalın.